The logo we just inaugurated is for this year's synod. The theme of this year's synod is for a synodal church, communion, participation, and mission. This will stretch for an extensive period of 2021 to 2023. To the top of this logo is the Holy Eucharist that shines like the sun, below which stands the tree of life, a large majestic tree which is sign of wisdom and light, which is also shaped as the cross of Christ, a sign of hope. The horizontal branches resemble open hands or rings and also resembles the Holy Spirit. Below the tree of life are the people, and the people are not static, they are on the move, depicting the synod where we walk together. The silhouettes that you see under the tree depict the dynamic people of God. In all, there are 15 silhouettes in five different colors which represent the entire humanity. It is important to note that the bishop and the nun are amidst the people, not at the front, highlighting the unity in mission and the walking together of the synod. Share the bread, we have come to sing our praises. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Kindly sit down. My dear children, my dear young people, and brothers and sisters, today we begin the diocesan phase of the Synod, which will continue till March 2022. And it will go on in other phases leading to the 16th Ordinary Assembly of the Synod of Bishops in Rome to be held in October 2023. The word Synod has come from the Greek word Sin and hodos, which means journeying together, walking together, working together. At church, we journey together with the Holy Spirit, and Jesus is our way. Jesus' passion, death and resurrection gave rise to a movement of his disciples called the way, as found its reference in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, 19, and 22. This way of people with diverse spiritual gifts and charisms was filled with a deep sense of service and mission. They saw themselves as servants of the community. In today's readings, first from the book of Isaiah, and then from the letter to the Hebrews, as well as the gospel, from the gospel according to Mark, we shall see that this was not always the case with them. But with Jesus' passion, death, resurrection, and the gift of the Spirit of the Spirit received at the time of Pentecost, they were totally changed, transformed, became brave, did not remain timid, broke all the bondages, and they went into different directions to share their experience and the encounter with the spirit of the risen Lord. During this Eucharist today, as we celebrate in solidarity with the Bishop of Wasai, Archbishop Felix Machado, who celebrated the Eucharist last Sunday in union with the Bishop of Rome, Pope Francis. Let us reflect on the journey of Jesus' disciples together with him. And let us also pray for the success of the Synod in our own Diocese of Vasai. Let us acknowledge our sins, so to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries meaningfully. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray, O Lord, ruler and guardian of your church, pour out, we pray, upon your servants a spirit of truth, understanding and peace, that they may strive with all their heart to know what is pleasing to you, and then pursue it 
with all their strength through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. It was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. The Word of the Lord Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brethren, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory be to you, O God. At that time, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the chalice that I drink or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The chalice that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they, were, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are supposed to rule over the Gentiles lord it over them. And the great men exercise authority over them, but it shall not be so among you. But what, whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. But the Son of Man also came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
my dear children, my dear young people, and brothers and sisters, today's both the readings and the gospel focus our attention on service, serving leadership, the leadership which is not self-centered but other-oriented. The gospel is from the gospel according to St. Mark chapter 10, which comes soon after Jesus has already spoken thrice to his disciples about his passion and death as a journey towards Jerusalem. Jerusalem for Jesus was not the sightseeing spot as we sometimes think about going for Holy Land. Jerusalem for Jesus is the place of passion and of death. But his disciples see G Jerusalem as a center for gaining power, privileges, and positions. That's why James and John, two of Jesus' closest disciples, come forward with a request. Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. Their request is quite simple. Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and another one at your left in your glory. The right hand and the left hand are simply positions of power and what in what they hoped would be Jesus' kingly court in Jerusalem. And do not refer to seats in the heaven. For the disciples did not expect Jesus to be crucified, much less to rise from the dead. In answer to James and John's request for positions of power, form, and glory, Jesus offers them the cup which I drink. And to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized. The cup of suffering, the waters of sorrow, are First Testament figures of speech. And instead of seats of power, pomp and glory, Jesus invites them to experience the power of service. Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. These are the very words of Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Messiah. Jesus desires a change of mind set among his disciples and readiness to let go of earthly power and authority. We are talking about Synod, our Holy Father, a visionary, a missionary, thought of this Synod. Synod on the very Synod, which is rather radical idea, the paradigm shift from the past. He calls Synod for each one of us, not only for the bishops, though the topics were meant for all, but he is involving all of us together by following the steps which are also thought-provoking. Number one, journeying together and leaving nobody aside. The journey together will call us to renew our mentality, our outlook, our perspective. Hindi mein kaha jata hai, najariya badlal dena ye hota hai maksad shiksha ka. To change the attitude, to change our eyes, our sight, 
our perspective is the real goal of education. So this synod is invited to change our perspective and to look with the perspective of Jesus the Christ. For the sake of our faith, our ecclesial structures in order to live out God's call for the church amid the present signs of times. And so listening, listening to all of you, all the entire people of God will help the church. And church is not only of the baptized persons, but all the people of God around us to make pastoral decisions that correspond as closely as possible to surrender to God's will. And so the ultimate perspective is to orient this synodal path of the church to serve the dialogue of God with humanity. Dialogue of God with humanity. Humanity with humanity. And to journey together for the kingdom of God. This synodal process therefore seeks to move towards a church that is more fruitfully at the service of the coming of the kingdom of heaven and not according to our own whims and fancies but the church that was visualized by Jesus at the last supper. And so the theme of the synod is for a synodal church, communion, participation, and mission. The three dimensions of the theme are very fascinating. These three dimensions are profoundly interrelated. They are the vital pillars of the synodal church. There is no hierarchy among them between them. Not that the first is less important than the third one. Rather, each of these parts of the theme enriches and orients the other two. There is a dynamic relationship between the three that must be articulated with all three in mind. And so number one is communion. This communion is not about what we are talking about, the Holy Communion that we receive at the end of the Eucharist, towards the end of the Eucharist. Though it is inherent, by His gracious will, God gathers us together as diverse people of one faith through the covenant that He offers to His people. The communion we share finds it deepest roots, deepest roots in love, in unity of the Trinity. It is Christ who reconciles us to the Father and unites us with each other in the Holy Spirit. Together, we are inspired by listening to the Word of God through the living tradition of the church, our mother church, our teacher church, Mater et Magistra, as Pope Saint John the 23rd wrote in his encyclical, and grounded in the sensus fidei, a sense of faith that we share with one another. We all have a role to play in discerning, in identifying, in concentrating, in making right choice and living out God's call for his people. The second one is participation, a call for the involvement of all who belong to the people of God. The logo indicates this theme beautifully. Laity, consecrated people, Odin people, together 
there are 15 images in that little logo that is being prepared. The small logo, but the big idea to engage in the ex exercise of deep and respectful listening to one another. Listening not only with the ears, though we say hear has already the word ear, but listening is hearing with heart, with whole being. This listening creates space for us to hear the Holy Spirit together and guides our aspirations for the church and for the third millennium against the backdrop of the coronavirus pandemic in particular. Participation is based on the fact that all the faithful are qualified. No one is less, no one is more important. And all are called to share the faith, to serve one another through the gifts they have each received from the Holy Spirit, though we did not deserve. In a synodal church, the whole community, in the free and rich diversity of its members, for example, here in our parish, we come from various cultures, various states, various language backgrounds. We are called together to pray, to listen, to analyze, to dialogue, to discern and offer advice on making pastoral decisions which correspond as closely as possible to God's will. Not to impose our will, our plans, programs and projects on God, but to understand what God has in store for us, for our well-being, what are His programs, what are His projects, what are His plans for us, so that we may enjoy life in its fullness, as mentioned in the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 10, verse 10. And so genuine efforts must be made to ensure the inclusion of those at the margins or who feel excluded, bypassed, neglected. To them, our attention needs to be during this synodal journey. Third and the last one, the mission. The word mission is not limited only to a far-flung area of the city or of a particular diocese. The, ex the church exists to evangelize, to share the good news. It's given at the baptism, the responsibility that we cannot ignore. We can never be centered on ourselves. Our mission is to witness to the love of God in the midst of the whole human family. And so, there is a possibility we are surrounded by the people of various religions, caste, creed, color, region, religion, and what not. The synodal process has a deep missionary dimension to it. It is intended to enable the church to better witness to the gospel, especially with those who live on the spiritual, social, economic, political, geographical, and existential peripheries of our world. Those who are thrown away from us, the last, the least, and the lost. In this way, my dear children, my dear brothers and sisters, and my dear young people, thus synodality is a path by which the church can more fruitfully fulfill her mission of evangelization in the world as the leaven at the service of the coming of God's kingdom, like a catalyst which makes difference wherever it drops. As we begin our synodal journey, Jesus reminds us, number one, 
that he is with us on our life's journey. There are problems and there are challenges. There are difficulties and there are various issues. And yet, he assures us that he is with us in our journey. Number two, that as Christians, we are to be two true servants. We are to serve so as to lose a life in order to save it and to gain it in the life after life, to gain the heavenly life. Number three, that he understands our trials and our temptations and stands by us in our weaknesses and failings. And so, instead of living in the feeling of guilt and shame, the mistakes which might have happened, instead of dwelling in the past, let's become the master of future, not the slave of the past, and to move together, bringing others also along, so that we will be able to realize the true call of our conversion, of our change, of our transformation, through the threefold goal of this synod, communion, participation, and mission. Let us rise and profess our faith in one voice through Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we begin our synodal journey together, all over the diocese, in each and every parish, for Diocese of Wasai, and also all over the world. Let us pray as one united body, the Church, for the Holy Spirit to guide us in all our processes of dialogue and discernment. Our response, Lord, strengthen us as we journey together. Lord, strengthen us as we journey together. For Francis, our Pope, Archbishop Felix, and the holy, faithful people of God in the Diocese of Vasai, at the celebration of the Synod, may help us to discern God's will and to boldly carry it out. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, strengthen us as we journey together. For all civil and public authorities, that they may always seek the common good, acting with justice and integrity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, strengthen us as we journey together. For God's holy church, that it may be a light to the nations and the universal sacrament of salvation, walking with all peoples to the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord strengthen, strengthen us as, as we journey, journey together. together. For the sick, the lonely, the oppressed, and the suffering, that they may never be discarded, but rather treasured and cared for as the face of Christ in a suffering world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord strengthen, strengthen us, us as, as we journey, journey together. together. For ourselves gathered here, that the synod process may lead us ever deeper into the communion of the church, foster our participation in it, and equip us to go out on a mission. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord strengthen, strengthen us, us as, as we, we journey, journey together. together. And for our personal intentions, let's pray in the heart, in the depth of our heart. O oh God, you are our refuge and our strength. As we journey together with you, hear the prayers of your church. For you yourself are the source of all devotion. And grant, we pray, that what we ask in faith we may truly obtain through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bless are you, Lord. my sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of your servants, O God of all compassion, and bestow on them the grace of your light that they may have a true understanding of what is right in your eyes and boldly carry it out 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of all infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation, and having filled her with life by the power of your Spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one manifesting the covenant of your love she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness which is Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for eternity and so with all the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth while with all the church, as one voice, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come.
Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of your gospel, strengthened by the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope, Felix our Bishop, and all the and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teachings, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Ah. Uh -huh. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not I'm worthy, not worthy that, that you should enter under, under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us make a spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O divine guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Yeah. 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O merciful God, that the holy gifts we have received may confirm your servants in the truth and prompt us to seek the honor of your name. Through Christ our Lord. Kindly sit down. You are already aware about the contact person, the senior parish level core team, the persons who will facilitate the conversations and consultations for the synod to be held in Rome in the year 2023. The process which has begun from today all over the world Kindly pray, pray along with the opening prayer, Atsumus Sancte Spiritus. We stand before you, Holy Spirit. This is the prayer. Pray at home, pray in the communities, pray in the groups, pray also individually explain to the persons the importance of this particular synod the persons who will come in your contact this particular prayer we stand before you holy spirit was used in the second vatican council which began in 1962 and concluded in 1965 it began with this prayer, the prayer that we are going to use now. We begin from today onwards. The first words of this original Latin meaning, we stand before you, Holy Spirit, which has been historically used at the councils, at the synods, and other church gatherings for hundreds of years. It is attributed to St. Isidore, of Servile, was born in 560 and died in 636. As we embrace this synodal process, may this prayer invite and enable us to accompany the Holy Spirit so that He will be with us and we may be a community and a people of grace. We begin that prayer together. The member of the parish level synod core committee and also the broader base committee will enable us to pray together with the help of this prayer. And at the end of the prayer, we are going to ask the Mother Mary to intercede for us as we are also going to ask her to pray for us. Prayer for the Synod. 
We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name. With you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, kindly bow your head and ask for God's special blessing on this inaugural day of the Synod preparation. We are the body of Christ and each one, each one of us is a member of it. You who are his people, may the Lord keep you in the unity of his love so that the world may come to believe. Amen. Amen. We all are called to holiness, you the religious, the lay faithful, and the entire people of God. Encourage one another to live according to the light of the gospel. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ is built through diverse charisms and ministers, ministries. You deacons, priests, bishops, and all ministers of the people of God, may the Lord keep you faithful and joyful in the service of the mission of the church. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go, oh, you are sent to carry on with the synodal process of communion, participation, and mission. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Lord, make me like you. 
Thank you.